A journey into the Rhino Horn War has won the coveted Best Documentary Award at the prestigious San Diego International Film Festival. Here's a snippet from the documentary, but be warned that some of the visuals are of a graphic nature. I just opened the door and then that's when I saw these five guys holding the girls. I saw the big axe. I knew they didn't come for us. I knew it was for the Rhino. The Kruger National Park is home to the largest population of rhinos on the planet, and they are being poached here. An epidemic of slaughter, and at this rate, the rhino is doomed. And on the ground, the situation resembles war. It's the only one suspect that's been arrested. Yes, only one suspect, the Chinese national. The whole supply chain might start in Kruger. But where the hell does it end up? The center of the illegal trade in horns is Vietnam. There's no turning around. The rhino, it will go like blood. Like blood, you see? 94 US dollar for one gram. 94? It's a rhino. The court will note that the case number two is not present. He was shot and killed in Kruger after he was released from violence. Is it written today that I die? I don't fear being shot. I fear making a mistake and landing up in jail. I got to do something. I'm going to stand up for the rhino. Back home for my people, this piece of rhino horn is a symbol of death. What do you say to them? You come across this beautiful, beautiful animal lying dead there, and the only thing that is gone is a horn, and you just think to yourself, what a waste. Joining us now, we speak to uh, the filmmaker, or one of the filmmakers, Bonnet de Bod. She joins us via phone line. A very good evening to you, Bonnet. Thank you very much for joining us. Firstly, a very congratulations to yourself and the team. Uh, this weekend was a winning one for you as filmmaker, as well as uh, Susan Scott as director. A strip also scooped out additional two awards from the LA based Glendale International Film Festival, as well as one in LA from the city's premier uh, film festival, LA Femme. How has the team? received the news. Well, uh, good evening, Shante, and, and also to the viewers, and wonderful to connect with a uh, South African audience from London. Uh, yes, the reception of Struop Journey into the Rhino Horn War in the U.S. has just been incredible. Uh, we, of course, were hoping for a good reception for the film, but this has been more than we ever expected. Uh, myself and director Susan Scott, we've been on the International Film Festival run now with the film for the past six weeks, and not only has the film been officially selected for 15 festivals, but has also won uh, in total nine awards, uh, with the most recent being the Best Documentary Award at the very prestigious San Diego International Film Festival. And I have to say, uh, Shante, a standout for me was when Hollywood's Mudbound producer, Carl Tequila, who actually presented the awards uh, to us, said that the jury felt rhino poaching and wildlife crime in general was one of the biggest issues in the world right now. Uh, specifically, the struggle the world's rhinos are having to remain alive for the next decade. And there's just so much truth to that statement. So that just, it gives me hope because it tells me that the rhino poaching fight back home in South Africa is not a fight we have to fight alone. Uh, many Americans actually came up to us after the screening saying to us, but, you know, why do you talk about South Africa's rhinos? They belong to all of us. It's actually the world's rhinos. So uh, I have to say the one thing that I've learned uh, during my time here in America is that rhinos really don't own passports. They belong to all of us. So definitely, this is an incredible accomplishment given that over 130 films across both fiction and documentary were in competition and uh, Strub coming out top. Well, absolutely. You know, I, I remember actually when we found out that the film had been officially selected and, you know, we were just over the moon about that. Uh, Variety ranks it as a major showcase for outstanding U.S. and international independent filmmaking. So to be selected was, was incredible. And uh, what was really funny was that 
we were just so thrilled to be selected and in the lineup with top uh, two top exceptional documentaries that had real buzz around them. So we, of course, thought, well, one of those two films will be the winner. Uh, they were American, current, hot local issues and, and totally relatable to the Californian audiences. So we knew that a South African film about the slaughter of rhinos was going to be a hard watch, a, a necessary one, but not necessarily a, a winning film at a prestigious film festival like San Diego, so or so we thought. So uh, on the night of the awards, the festival had been given the film an early evening second screening in a theatre in the northern suburbs of San Diego, and after the screening, as with all the other screenings, we engaged with the audience afterwards. Uh, and it was a full hour, we were chatting, we were answering questions about the film, about rhinos, and then one of the VIP patrons actually came up to us and they said, well, you'd better get to the awards ceremony tonight, because I've seen all the documentaries and my money is on this for taking the festival win. So having that little bit of confidence made us think, okay, maybe we nominated, and how awesome would that be to be nominated, never thinking that we would actually win. And, and I still can't believe it, Chante. It's just absolutely incredible. Yeah, definitely. Just going back and touching on that importance that uh, this was a documentary that essentially captured the fight in Rhino Horn War, as well as the gains that are being made. How significant is this in being able to, of course, show that awareness, as well as, you know, the power of influence that this uh, documentary film currently has? Right. So, you know, the rhino crisis is a heartbreaking, it's a powerful story that I personally think anyone anywhere in the world will relate to. You don't have to have seen a rhino or have grown up in the Kruger to feel for them and to share in the struggle that truly our heroes on the ground are involved in to try and stop this. So I absolutely knew that this is a story it would connect globally, and many times in the cutting room, myself and, and Susan, we would look at each other with affirmation, knowing that people would be moved by what they saw, as we were moved when we filmed it. Uh, we had to let the real story be shown without cluttering it, and, and by that I mean the heartfelt interviews from the front lines that we are all witness to in the film, as if we are sitting right there with the rangers in their lookout points, or the uh, prosecutors in court. So, People connect with the story. And very interestingly, though, there were many people back in South Africa who came up to us, Shantae, in the four years we were making strip, saying that we should consider putting an American celebrity in the film or that we should use an American actor to do the voice over the narration. You know, there seems to be an, uh, an idea among South Africans that we can't succeed on the international arena unless we Americanize it. And quite the opposite has happened. We have this huge reaction to the film precisely because it does tell a unique South African story by a South African. So it's, 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 it's wonderful. And quite simply put, the Americans have connected strongly with this film, with what is happening to the world's rhinos. Uh, and they belong to all of us. And therefore, they say it's not South Africa's crisis. It's the world's crisis, and that's very, very powerful to hear. People are inspired after watching the film. They, they come up to us and they say, we want to do something, and this is what we will do to help rhinos back home in South Africa, and that's fantastic. Thank you very much for that. Jabane Dobod, a producer and a presenter of that award-winning Now documentary, uh, a strip just telling us as they continue to uh, scoop global awards. Meanwhile, witness safety was today under the spotlight at the bail hearing of the two alleged Mpumalanga rhino poaching kingpins and five police officers. While well, the bail hearing was postponed to the 25th of October. The seven were arrested by the Hawks last month. They faced charges of dealing in rhino horns. All but one of the aspects, or rather suspects, have been remanded in custody. Uh, the police officers also appearing with the suspected kingpins have been suspended from work.